Hi, I'm Dan, welcome to the Airbrush Garage. Today, I'm gonna to be doing not only a review on airbrushes or the airbrushes I own, but a comparison also. Um, I know you've seen a lot of reviews out there and it's just reviewing, you know, an unboxing and doing one airbrush. I'm gonna show you three airbrushes today. I'm gonna to show you how they compare. So if you're looking to buy your first airbrush or add to your collection, this may help you. So with that, let's get started. All right, so the three airbrushes I'm gonna be showing you today is an Awada HP CS Eclipse. That is the brush that I started with and I still use today and have it for over 20 years. Most of your airbrush artists out there will refer to it as their workhorse. The Awada Eclipse takes a 0.35 millimeter needle. So you can get really fine detail with it. You know, not as fine as a Micron, but you're gonna get fine detail with it all the way up to nice, you know, nice broad spray. So that's why they call it the workhorse. Uh, the next one is that I just purchased, not uh, but a couple of years ago, is the Iwata Highline HP CH. Um, that one there has a Mac valve on it, and I'll be showing you that when we go to break the brushes down, um, which allows you to adjust the air um, at the uh, front of the gun. Um, it looks like a Micron, but it's not a Micron. Okay, it's kind of middle of the road. And then uh, my newest purchase was an Infinity um, by Harder and Steinbeck. Um, this one has a 0.15 millimeter uh, needle, which uh, I got it for some, doing some very fine detail. Um, I didn't want to spend the expense for a Micron, so uh, I decided after doing some research on this, and if you stick around to the end, you're gonna give you a very interesting fact that I bet you didn't know about this airbrush. I did forget to mention that this airbrush is comparable in needle size to the Eclipse. It's just slightly, slightly thinner with a 0.3 needle. And one last thing, as you can see, the more money you spend, the better box you'll get. Now, I wouldn't hold too much into the box because of the fact I've never put my airbrushes back in the box. Once they're out, they stay in my stand. The only time I think you'll ever need your box again is if you're gonna package it up when you go to sell it. The Harder and Steinbeck does come with a nice box. Okay. The Highline comes with a little bit better of a box than the Eclipse. Again, the more money you spend, the nicer box you're gonna get. I almost can guarantee you, if this is something you have a passion for, and you're gonna be doing for a long time, you're not putting your airbrushes back in your box unless you're going to be traveling with them. If that is a factor uh, or something you're gonna be doing, then it may be a factor. Uh, so with that, let's break them down. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly break down all three of these guns, show you the inner workings of them, and explain some of the features. So we're gonna start with the Eclipse, and the Eclipse comes equipped with a wrench. You're gonna see that two of these guns have tooling with them or need tools to take them apart and put them back together where uh, the Infinity doesn't. But the Eclipse, comes with your wrench, okay? The important part of any nozzle on an airbrush is that you don't over tighten it. They just need to be snug tight. What I mean by snug tight is a little past what your finger pressure can do, okay? Um, they all come with a needle cap. Any airbrush from cheap to expensive should come with a needle cap. Um, and then your nozzle cap. One of the features I actually do like about, uh, after seeing a whole bunch of different guns, um, the Eclipse, I really do like their nozzle. It is a compression fitted nozzle. Um, what I mean by that is, if you can see, it is a brass or a copper, uh, I think it's brass, nozzle and it has a tapered uh, uh, compression fitting to it. So that tapered part of that nozzle goes into a tapered hole and then when you press down on it um, it's just like a compression pipe fitting basically um, seals it up now with these nozzles they do wear out from taking them in and out and they'll get little bits of you know grooves in them and that's where you can develop an air leak that's where you know you should always keep one of these on hand um, they do last quite a long time though all right so i do really like that nozzle and the other part of it is you'll see in the next one that this nozzle is you know, a decent size, it has a decent hole in it, and to me it's a lot easier to clean, okay? It does have a nice large color cup on it, okay? The Eclipse does. 
Um, the trigger mechanism is pretty standard, but it is very smooth and works nicely. Just like every gun, it has a back to it and a locking nut. I always push my needles through this way. It's just a habit. Um, it's, uh, it's just a habit I use uh, in, in my cleaning uh, method, uh, which I have a video uh, about cleaning uh, airbrushes. You might wanna go check that one out. Um, I have a pretty unique way of doing it. So that's as easy as it, you know, uh, it's quick and easy as it, it takes to break an airbrush down. They go back together just as quick. Okay, the next one, same thing, needle cap. Um, with this one here, it has a slightly different smaller cap or nozzle cap than the Eclipse because it also has a very small nozzle okay and you'll see that when i take this off you can see the difference in the wrenches okay eclipse wrench and hp ch wrench the high line this one here you really got to be careful when you're tightening it okay can't even hold this between my fingers, you might not see it. Okay, that's how small that nozzle is. Very small, Micron does the same thing, okay? Um, not as easy to clean, but not a lot of paint, obviously, you can see you can get in there, but I just did run a little thinner through it. But, um, so anyway, very, very small nozzle, very delicate threads on it. Back comes off the same way, locking nut, Needle comes through, disassembled. Now, the Infinity, what I really like about this gun, it's a couple different features on it. It's toolless. I just pulled off the needle cap, okay? And what's really cool about this needle cap that I like is that I don't spray with it on, but if you did want to spray with it on, you could because I don't like these little forks out there where you can get your fingers in on that needle to clean the tip, uh, needle for your tip dry, or you can get a little paintbrush in there with some thinner on it, no problem. Whereas the other needle caps are not constructed like that, and they completely surround the needle. So you're never going to get your finger in there or your fingers in there to clean off your needle with that cap. So the, the cap style on, on this Infinity is a really cool uh, design. Um, another cool design about this brush that the other brushes don't have, and I don't know if any other ones do, um, this is a two-in-one brush. This brush can be shifted out or, or to put a 0.4 uh, needle nozzle combination into it um, and hold a bigger color cup. Um, as I said before, this uh, needle combination is a uh, 0.15 needle, so a very fine needle, so it comes with a smaller color cup. Um, I opted just to get the airbrush straight up like that and, and not get the uh, four, uh, 0.4 needle combination. Uh, so anyway, that is a really cool feature. It makes the gun a lot easier to clean. It makes the cup really easy to clean. The next thing would be the needle or nozzle cap, again, is just unscrewed with the fingers. That's a really awesome feature. I love this that I don't need to have a tool to take this airbrush apart. As you can see, the nozzle is a nice size nozzle. There's a nice size hole in it where I can feel I can clean that out really good. It's not, not really, really tiny. Um, so again, I think that's a nice feature. So anyway, the back comes off just all in the same. Now you can adjust. The other thing too here is you can adjust with this adjustment right here. There's a little, uh, a little steel dowel basically tool that goes in there. Um, that you can turn this and adjust the stiffness of your trigger pull, okay? I never personally adjusted it. I like the way it was adjusted from the factory. I think it's probably the best way to go unless you like a little bit, you know, more resistance or something like that, but it is adjustable there. So same way, needle through the front, okay? Now, as I reassemble these, I'm going to give you um, just some little quick things about what the differences in the airbrushes are. So reassemble, 
I put the needle about halfway, lock the nut because I don't want the needle sticking out here because I don't want anything to be able to bend or touch the needle until I get the, the, you know, the inner workings of the front on, you know, your nozzle, your nozzle cap, everything else. This brush goes back together very easily. The nozzle fits inside the nozzle cap. It screws on. You just hand tighten it or finger tighten it. Once you have that on, you put your needle cap on, keeps everything protected. Then you slide your needle in. Okay. What's cool about this airbrush is a feature it has, and a lot of your upper end airbrushes have it now that I don't particularly use, but it's there. I'm sure some people use it. Um, but Harder and Steinbeck did a really nice job with this, uh, I think, compared to other airbrushes. And it is the trigger stop, okay? Their trigger stop on this is a push button trigger stop. You push the button, it has numbers, okay, on the dial that you can adjust how far back this trigger will go, okay? All right, and you want to stop off, you just pull it out, okay? So that is a really nice feature that they put on this brush. Um, it is, there is a feature, or the feature also exists. Actually, I'll put this up here. On the HPCH, the Highline, okay. Also goes back just as easy as it came apart, halfway through with the needle, snug down on your nut, don't make it go all the way through. Um, you, what I suggest with this is because of the size of this nozzle that you put this back on over a table, always work over a table with it. Cause if you drop it on the floor, see, I just dropped it. You got to get those threads started. It takes a little bit to get used to. Those threads are very delicate. You don't want to cross thread them. So once you get that started, I just run it down with my fingers. Now here's the key to this. You want to just snug it up. I mean, just snug it up. So once you get that wrench on there and you feel resistance, just a little tap. Okay. You don't want to go too far with it. So once you get the front of that gun all protected up, now you can push your needle through. Okay. Put your back on. So in addition to having a Mac valve on this particular gun, this also has a uh, needle stop. It's not as nice, in my opinion, as the Herder and Steinbeck, um, but it does work. Um, what it is, it is just, it doesn't give you any numbers or dial, but basically if you push down on the trigger and you pull it all the way back, you'll watch the, you'll watch the stop push it forward. Try to stop pushing it forward. Okay. So you can just adjust it to where you want. Um, the only thing with that is you don't have numbers to, you know, after you unset it, you don't have numbers to go back to say, well, okay, I was at two and a half. So you're going to have to go a little trial and error again to get it to where you want it to go. But it does offer a stop. The HPCH, big uh, nozzle, no problem. You see how quick these things go back together. I mean, that's why I hear people don't clean their airbrushes because it's too much trouble. You know, protect your investment. So again, you snug it up with your fingers, just a little bit of a turn, not much. It's a compression fitting, so just snug it down. So just to recap, you got three different airbrushes with three different price points. Okay. The Eclipse at about 130 to 150. The Highline um, HP CH at about 230. And the Infinity Harder and Steinbeck at about 265, 275, depending on the package you get with it. Uh, so 
all three airbrushes, great airbrushes. If I was gonna have a sole airbrush, only one airbrush, it probably, in, in my box, just like where I started, would be the Eclipse and or the uh, Highline, um, just because I can get fine to, you know, a lot broader lines. Now, if you're gonna choose the Infinity, I would get the uh, two-in-one, where it comes with the larger cup that you can change out and the 0.4 needle. Um, I just don't want to be bothered with switching back and forth. I bought the gun because I wanted it solely for fine lines. So, like I said, if you're going to go with this gun, I would opt to get the two-in-one. Uh, the real quick, the real quick, the differences in the guns. Just to recap, no frills on this gun on the Eclipse. It does have a nice large color cup. Okay, uh, it has the 0.35 millimeter needle. Um, there is no uh, trigger stop on it, and there's no Mac valve, okay? but it does a great job. The Highline um, is similar in needle size to the Eclipse with a 0.3 millimeter needle versus the 0.35, but it does have the Mac valve, and it does have a trigger stop on it. Uh, the color cup is the same size, nice large color cup as the uh, Eclipse. And then the Xfinity has, doesn't have the Mac valve, but it does have a feature that the other two don't have. As we, you saw before, the color cup comes off and that's where you can put the bigger color cup on. That's a really cool feature. And it does have probably the nicest trigger stop that I've ever seen if you did want to use them, where it's just push and pull and it has, you know, nice numbers here on your dial. So you could always remember, oh, I, you know, I'm, if you did happen to move it and you want to go back, you knew you were a two, two and a half. You could just dial it right back in to get that same size line that you were spraying before. Um, the trigger control on it is different than the Iwata's. I actually really do like this trigger control. Very, very smooth trigger control. Um, and it is adjustable. I've never adjusted it yet, but there is three holes to adjust it um, for, for certain things. Uh, probably once it's set where it's at, you probably won't adjust it, but it is there just in case you want it. Um, one of the things I did promise you that I was going to tell you something about this airbrush that you probably don't know, and that is that in 2017, Anest Awada bought Harder and Steinbeck. Again, Awada is a J Japanese or Japan-based uh, uh, company, and the Harder and Steinbeck is a German-based company. Harder and Steinbeck was in business uh, for since like, I think it was like 1923. Two engineers got together and developed this airbrush. Um, in 2017, as I said, Iwata purchased them and bought them out. Honestly, that probably was what pushed me over to buy this. Again, I think there's a lot of great airbrushes out there. I'm not saying that Iwata or, or this particular airbrush is the best. Um, it's the best for me. Um, you know, Badgers and uh, just... Uh, there's just so many. I could just name a list of airbrushes that you can go out and research and buy. It's kind of what you start with and you develop. And if you develop a liking toward it, you kind of stay loyal to it. Um, I probably would have purchased this airbrush anyway, just because I researched it for about a year and I really, really did like the design and the technology of the airbrush and uh, watching reviews like this um, helped me make my decision. But when I found out that Iwata had bought them and it is now an Iwata product basically, that was a little bit to help me push me over the edge and finally do it. Um, and I'm not sorry I did it. It is a fantastic airbrush. So I will have links for all of these airbrushes down below. There are my affiliate links. Please hit them if you'd like to view these airbrushes or even purchase one. Uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or two. It does help with uh, the YouTube algorithm for me and uh, to help build this channel. And with that, I appreciate your time and stopping by the Airbrush Garage. See you in the next video.